battle for the Toyota Atlantic Championship. His friend and rival, Jimmy Vassar, in hot pursuit. The man who came across the finish line first would win the title. And so when the pressure was on, Joby Marcello prevailed and took the crown. And in victory lane, he celebrated with his father. And thus, we will remember this quiet young Filipino, Joby Marcello. Hi, welcome to my channel and this is episode 89 of the Grape Tour of the Famous Series. In this video, we visited Loyola Memorial Park in search of notable individuals and famous celebrities interred in this park in Marikina. Come, join us to remember, celebrate the life and visit the final resting place of a champion race car driver that won the 1991 Toyota Atlantic race in US. Located at the northern side of the park near the crematorium, we found the Marcellus Mausoleum where the graves of Joby Marcello and his father, mentor, Eddie, are interred. Edward Joby Jacinto Marcello was born in April 1965 from Quezon City. He was a Formula car race driver and best remembered for winning the 1991 Toyota Atlantic Championship held at Watkins Glen Circuit from April to October 1991 in US. Joey came from family of motorsports racer. His father Eddie was known for racing dragster, motorcycles, and speedboats locally as well as in Malaysia and Macau. At 11, Joby already into go-kart races, however, in his late teens, he left the country to study in Armstrong College in Berkeley, U.S. After earning business degree in college, Joby raced in junior formulas in the U.K. and New Zealand series. In 1990, Joby returned to the U.S. and competed in the Toyota Atlantic Championship, finishing second in the race behind Mark Dismore. In this race debut super performance, Jovi earned the Toyota Atlantic Rookie of the Year Award of 1990. In 1991, Jovi continued to race for the Toyota Atlantic Series held at Lime Rock Park and Nazareth Speedway in U.S., where he won the 1991 Toyota Atlantic Championship, beating Jimmy Vassar. The battle for the Toyota Atlantic Championship. His friend and rival, Jimmy Vassar, in hot pursuit. The man who came across the finish line first would win the title. And so when the pressure was on, Joby Marcello prevailed and took the crown. And in victory lane, he celebrated with his father. In 1992, Joby moved up to another racing league, the IndyCar Series. His championship and winning performance attracted the attention of Antonio Ferrari, the owner of Euro Motorsports team. Joby was set to run the 1992 Indianapolis 500 race, piloting the number 50 Euro Motorsports, Fendi, AGIP, Marcelo, Midas, Tomarin Formula car. However, during the practice run for the Indy 500 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway Circuit in Indiana, U.S., Joby met an untimely death in May 1992 resulting from a fatal crash when his formula car slammed into the race circuit wall resulting to massive head trauma. He was just 27. We mentioned emotion. Everything that has happened here this weekend has happened under a pall of gloom as a result of a fatal crash yesterday afternoon in turn one. It has been 10 years to the day since a driver fatality at this racetrack and on that unfortunate anniversary, Joby Marcello, 27-year-old Filipino husband and father, soft-spoken, a virtual unknown in IndyCar racing, came here having run more than 500 laps and had this accident. And this was an unusual accident. We can see he's very low down inside the apron in turn one. He'd only been running 175 miles an hour. He lost control of the car and made heavy contact with the outside wall. All the damage was done right there. The car then went into turn two. But Jovi Marcello did suffer very severe injuries. We see him coming off the wall here. Heavy suspension damage, heavy damage to the tub. But Jovi Marcello 
a very unfortunate incident. You make a key point, and that is the one of speed. He was running at 175 miles an hour, give or take. The pole speed had been over 230, and he, in fact, had lapped at close to 216, 217. So uh, speed and the impact are not necessarily always directly associated. We can get more on the aftermath of that crash from another of our pit reporters. Let's go trackside to Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Dave. This is unfortunately part of the job I do not enjoy. We just moments ago, the Bob Walters, Director of Public Relations for Indianapolis Motor Speedway, came to us with information from Dr. Henry Bach, who is the medical director here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Henry and his crack staff were there, as they are every day during the month of May, to try to preserve life and limb. Dr. Bach had received word just moments ago from the coroner listing the official cause of death for Jovi Marcello. That caused blunt force head trauma caused by the crash. Now, most importantly, the other information information we have the salient points there were no other injuries of any kind there were no marks on the helmet no marks on the uniform so a lot of the speculation in and around the garage area that possibly a tire or a piece of suspension came off and struck him that is not true there were no other injuries to the chest to the neck the total injury in the cause of death was blunt trauma to the head now the car has been examined by USAC technical director Mike Devon and he made these points also just moments ago to us exclusively the belts were functional and tight speculation maybe the belts malfunctioned not the case. They were functional and tight on impact. No pieces of the car came through the tub. Maybe some people were talking about suspension parts coming through the tub. Not so. The suspension did exactly what it was supposed to do, and they were intact. All the suspension pieces have been accounted for. There are no lost pieces. They have been examined by the USAC folks and determined that they all did their job. And the left side pod, the left part of the car, the chassis side part adjacent to the tub was intact, which tells us primarily that the impact or the, the blunt impact was the left front and then a quick whip to the left rear. So again, his cause of death was blunt head trauma, blunt force head trauma. Basically, it's a G-force deceleration type injury that caused the death of Jovi Marcello. And quickly, we might mention the funeral services will be in Hillsborough, California. He will be buried in his native Philippines. His father, Edward, here making arrangements, and they are as yet uh, incomplete. Back upstairs. It had been 10 years since Gordon Smiley died at Indianapolis. It is a reality which we never become accustomed to. Well, that's right. I think this month in particular, we've had so many good days where we've celebrated speeds, the Guerreros setting new track records. Um, I think they've had celebrations around the world when Guerrero did those type of speeds. But I think the savage reality of what can happen in IndyCar racing started to come when Mears had that horrific crash and people held their breath hoping he would survive. Nelson Piquet's accident suddenly uh, serious injuries to a three-time world champion. Well, Jovi Marcello was here chasing his dream to become the first driver from the Philippines to race at a track like this. Unfortunately, the reality was that he is not going to realize those dreams. And he leaves, I think he leaves his family, his wife, his child with memories of, of good days because he had some good days in the past. We will remember Jovi Marcello in happier times. Laguna Seca, last year, the battle for the Toyota Atlantic Championship. His friend and rival, Jimmy Vassar, in hot pursuit. The man who came across the finish line first would win the title. And so when the pressure was on, Jovi Marcello prevailed and took the crown. And in victory lane, he celebrated with his father. And thus, we will remember this quiet young Filipino, Joby Marcello, dead at the age of 27. We'll be right back. Six o'clock. In his legacy, the Toyota Atlantic Championship created the Joby Marcello Sportmanship Award, which is given in annual races as a Sportmanship Award for selected drivers. Above Jovi's niche was his father, Eddie Marcello, who died 16 years later in July 2008 at the age of 66. In the next episodes, we will post the video on the continuation of our visit of Manila North Cemetery and Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina. Later in this channel, we will also post more great tour videos including Libingan ng mga bayani in Taguig. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this channel. See you in our next great tour of the famous episodes.